Hi everyone. Well, Maya 2019 has arrived and we now have Arnold in the viewport. So this is a really exciting feature. And just at the start here, I'll go through a little bit of an overview of this tutorial. Uh, I am using ZooTools as well, our lighting tools to make it a little bit easier to demo, but this is just really a demo designed to show the features of Arnold and how well it performs in the viewport in 2019. So this feature in 2019 has been around for a couple of months. So for some of you, you might have been playing around with it already if you are keeping up with the point releases of Arnold. But for most of us now in 2019, this is going to be the first time that we're using this particular feature. So the big news is you can grab stuff and move it around in the viewport, not only navigate, but you can actually interact with your models. And we will expect that this is going to get a lot better as well. So this is a, a great first step. I'm finding this really quite stable. There is a crash uh, about halfway through this video, but I did a few hours of testing and for a new feature like this that I am pushing pretty hard by switching out models and lights and things like that, this is performing really well. So let's get stuck into this tutorial. It's a, a real-time tutorial. So I'm just talking through this as I go through the setup. Uh, we start at the beginning and uh, the good stuff happens a couple of minutes in. Be sure if you like the tools that we're using here, they are available on create3dcharacters.com and we got a really low price for $10. It is a subscription, so you just unsubscribe straight away if you would like to keep the tools. This is a limited time, so check it out now before ZooTools 2 comes around. All right, guys, let's uh, check out Arnold in the viewport here. So Arnold in the viewport is now in the renderer tab here and we can go to Arnold here and I'm gonna do that in a second. Let's just open a few things here. So I'm gonna use uh, the tools from create 3D characters, but this will work if you're just doing regular scenes too. It's just that these tools obviously make it a bit easier for me to demo on. So first of all, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller with the graph editor there and set this window here up with a square frame. So something like that. So it'll just make it a bit smaller and this will make the rendering a bit quicker, but you could tear off a panel and do whatever else that you wanted to do here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just open up uh, a few things. So this is just standard Maya stuff. So we can just create some objects in the scene by coming over here into uh, the asset manager here and we can just create a psych. So that just means that that's like a, a nice background psych there. Got a few different things that we can put in the scene. Let's just double click on that and build her. So, so she's there now. Usually in Maya, what I'll do is I'll go right click set the clipping planes from 0.9 to 5,000. And then this is only in my, on the create 3D characters preferences. And then here in Zootles, we just put on the anti-aliasing. Can also hold the in my hotkeys and just take off the grid there. It's a bit quicker to do something like that. So we can scroll down and uh, see some more stuff here. Put that down, something like this, just to get out of the way for this demo. Now we've got this uh, GPU stuff here. If you don't like that, that's found just here under display, heads up display, and then case you can take that off. That's for animation stuff it's down here to disable the case you can toggle that button on and off when the timeline goes smaller the new animation caching is off yeah so we can make these really small or whatever scroll down and we'll see all those there the next thing that we want to do is we want to load the light presets so uh that can be done with this little guy here this is the light presets i'm just going to bring those down here do something the same now we can scroll all the way down there's a lot of light presets these are the good ones from that down here they come with the zootles this is version one of zootles Okay, so now we can just create some lights. So I'll just double click on that. Now what that's done is in the scene, it's just created a whole bunch of lights and we can click through these guys and change them over. So I'll go back to this purple one, why not? And let's try it out. Let's give Arnold a go. So we're gonna come over to the Arnold viewport here. Now what happens is we get this little guy here and this is enables us to render in this viewport. So we just hit go and see what happens. So this is now rendering live in the viewport. You can see here, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, we can grab little bits and pieces. I can step up the hierarchy here, uh, select the whole group and then rotate her. This, this is not sped up at all. This is just running off my machine. It's a few years old now, so it's not a super, super duper fast machine. Now, if we want that to be turntabling, I, I can just come in here and, uh, sorry, this is the light presets in the asset manager over here. And we'll just turntable that. So I usually like to go from negative 90 degrees on the turntable, hit that, and that's now turntabling down here in the timeline, if we want to scrub through that. And we can see what that looks like now scrubbing here. So the update speed's really good in Arnold. It takes a little while to clean the noise, but I'm really looking forward to the GPU new upgrades that are going to happen in Arnold. But even so, this is pretty speedy and responsive. Like, look at that. It's really nice there. Now we can uh, change things here. So let's do that. Uh, I just got some background objects here. So these are the light presets. So we can just now double click those and it's going to be bringing them into the scene and just creating new light setups. You can see those there as we as we go through them. And, and that's the update speeds in the new Arnold and the new Maya 2019. 
that's really speedy. That's really responsive. I really like that. It's great. So let's have a look at these just here now. What happens is in Arnold, it, in my light presets, I, I select the light so you can see them. But if you hit Alt Q on my hotkeys, that just drops those lights. Or you can just click anywhere on the mesh and then deselect outside. I'm lost without my hotkeys. So we can just really quickly go through some of those. Hit Alt Q if you are on my hotkeys and deselect those. So there we go. Some nice presets. So we can zoom right up now and check out stuff. Now, a couple of things about this viewport here. Uh, I've only really just started using this. I have been on beta and I used it a little bit, but uh, we can just do different things. Move this around, render different parts. And you can see how that updates. Different settings. Okay, take that off. It's rendering fine without, so I'm just going to keep that big. Now, if some of the light setups are a bit dark on this little UI, you can just make those a little bit brighter. So just holding shift and making that twice as bright to point to 2.0. So you can see that brightening up those light presets. Obviously with uh, this tools too, we can come through and rotate those lights as well. That's just rotating it by 30 degrees. There we go. That's updating pretty well. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to zero that back out to one and then reset this rotation to zero. And this is deleting the lights and rebuilding them every time. So this is pretty responsive. I, I like it. So we'll go back to something like this. A couple other things. So down here in these assets, we've got these little prop balls and stuff like that. So we can just double click those. They bring in the prop balls there. What happens is it adds by type. Uh, so it will replace it if it is something else. So this is a prop type. So if I double click on this now, it will get rid of the balls and then add the, the little Macbeth chart there. But I want to bring them in together. So I just go replace add and then double click that. And now we've got those two. Switch it back to replace by type. And now we can go through some of these other assets such as a uh, little robo here. Click him in. This is, I'm just randomly clicking on these two, by the way. I'm not, I haven't really done much of a, a setup on this. So there's Robo and uh, these are supported by Alembics. So if we just come here into the timeline, you can see I can scrub here, back here, and that is animated. Let's see. Taking a little while to animate, but it is updating pretty well there. Okay, so we'll just go back to something like frame one on that and then uh, put in the watch. Watch is good because it's nice and reflective, like proper ray trace ref reflections. Nice and easy to see. Okay, and that's pretty good, isn't it? Look at that. Can only imagine what this is going to be like in the GPU. Okay, get a really good idea of what's happening there. Now let's just go back to something like this um, dragon here. Now just in the just for this demo, I will show you, it does take a while to load this dragon, so we're just waiting now. And uh, it's going to replace the, the watch, which is the main asset in the scene. And this is like a million polys, so it's a very heavy asset, and that's why it takes a while to come in. It's just the Alembic loading there. Now we've got something like that, and we can come into down here, wait for that to update. To so these presets up here. So this is real ray tracing, this is not faked or cheated in any way. Double click that and we can see that we've got different light settings. Now if I just come in here I can just actually delete all the lights like that and I'm going to come into a little light manager here and this is what I use to create lights in Arnold. Um, so I can click randomly over here. We should be able to find that thing. It's, there's no light so it's not showing us anything. Just come up to here and what I'm going to do is go uh, selected sorry, from the camera, and create a light. So that's just creating a light and dropping it from the camera. Now it's a bit dim, so we just hold shift and then just brighten that up quite a lot. And now we can move that light around and see how that's sort of going there. So so this is like, I'm not using the, the viewport at all, the actual old school one. You could of course have another floating window somewhere. But you know, that's that's looking pretty decent, isn't it? Something like that. So I might just bring that down a touch. Something like that. And now I want to create some rim lights. So a few people in my 
quick start guide to Arnold and to Redshift. And so that random man mentioned, oh, I should be doing some rim lights. So obviously I do know how to put some rim lights in the scene. So let's just put them in something like that. And I also like shift three on my hotkeys, by the way, I know I'm using my hotkeys, but you can find this as a light editor in Maya. Um, now we can do things like isolate that. Let's see how this goes. Okay, it's not, it's not updating. So it's not updating in here. Maybe this isn't working. No, this is one of the first times I've used this. Just take that off. And instead, let's just take that off. Let's see if we can just hide it. Yeah, so that'll work. Um, so this is this here is the rim. I can double click on that to rename that to be the rim light. And uh, now we can see exactly what it's doing. And uh, coming back into here with it selected, shift and brighten that up a bit. You can see it's doing something like this. There we go. And uh, now I want to add color to this light. So I'm just going to come in here and start clicking on these guys. And what that's doing is making it more saturated, in this case, red. Waiting for that to update. Well, there we go, there's a crash. All right, so in the interest of transparency, I left that crash in there. I want to show you guys exactly how this is working and what's happening, but I did do a full demo with this before and it hasn't crashed. That's the first crash I've experienced and I've been playing around with it for about an hour. It's not too bad. And uh, let's go in here and try that again. So I'm going to come in here. It could be also this, I've got the screen recorder going on the top of this, which is not super stable. So there we go. We're just reddening that light by clicking these buttons here. And then we can hold shift and go through these and all the different sort of colors of the rainbow uh, there. So I'll just put something like a bit of a ready color here. And then I'm going to duplicate that light over here. Move that. So we've got uh, that duplicate. I mustn't have hit that hotkey properly. Let's just undo that. And then hit duplicate, control D. There it goes. Two lights. Put the other one here. Move that around. There we go. And uh, now I'm going to hit this guy and put it on a, maybe a blue. So come around the other side, and we can see we've got a blue and a red sort of rim light happening there on that light. And we can reintroduce this key by clicking that on. And we've got something pretty nice. I might grab that key actually and just move it over a little bit there. So this is pretty cool. And once we've got the GPU happening, this is going to be sweet. I'm really excited about lighting like this, uh, something like that. So maybe that one is pretty bright. It, the closer that we move this light, the more it's going to sort of light up here and then light not down here. And then uh, I can come in and just hold and to bring everything into this light to see what that is actually doing, just hit that button there. And uh, now I can just hold shift and just reduce that a little bit. So maybe a bit brighter than that. Something like that. Okay. And we got a fairly decent looking render. Now I'm just going to take this away. and go full screen. So I just hit space bar. That seems to have handled it pretty well. Again, you can see the speeds here of rendering out that. Now I've, I've not touched anything. So this is totally my uh, Arnold defaults. It's probably going to be a little bit of noise in this render. You can check out my uh, quick start guides for cleaning up noise in Arnold and all the different renderers. Of course, these tools work in other renderers too, but I'm really liking this in um, Arnold here. You can see that working there and we've got a pretty nice sort of render very quickly. So pretty impressed with this Arnold stuff. Let's have a look at this mesh. Just click on it there. Yeah, dense that is. That's a very dense mesh from ZBrush just uh, decimated into Maya. That's handling it pretty well. Pretty nice and speedy going around that mesh. Having a look what that's like. I'm really uh, happy with this upgrade from Arnold here uh, rendering in the viewport.